Welcome back to NBC6's Sharks Up Close special, where we dive into the world of sharks. NBC's Tom Costello literally did just that, getting the experience of a lifetime. Here's what Tom learned when he went diving with a shark expert. I like that hammerhead. I like that shark. It's so big. There's something about those teeth, those eyes, that fin. Sharks love to eat people. No. They don't like to eat people. Young or old, sharks capture our imagination. Here at the Georgia Aquarium, they've got hammerheads, tiger sharks, sand sharks, silver tip, and silky sharks. Fifteen in all. I had oatmeal for breakfast. Is that going to make me more of an appealing target? Absolutely not. They don't like fiber. Yeah. They don't like fiber. Yeah. Okay, good. (laughs) Dr. Katie Lyons is a shark researcher and my personal underwater guide today. Take some slow, deep breaths. Within minutes of our shark cage going into the water, Katie's enthusiasm was contagious. So the what's with the big tall dorsal fin? Oh, just right there. Look to your right. Yep, I see it. Oh my gosh. So we... Being submerged in their world is truly sensory overload. The water is clear but cold as these giants of the deep stay in constant motion, circling. It's just a totally immersive experience. Oh, goodness, what is that? That's a big shark. So that is one of our sand tiger sharks. They're a really cool species. Swimming at the top of the food chain, they are essential to the ocean's life cycle. All these sharks play critical roles in the ecosystem, and they help keep everything in balance. Usually, sharks are interested in fish or seals, not humans. But attacks do happen. In May, a 13-year-old fended off a bull shark. Most occurred in Florida, followed by New York, Hawaii, and California. Still, 2022 brought the fewest shark attacks in 10 years, 41 unprovoked bites in the U.S. So you're more likely to have a coconut fall on you and kill you than to be bit by a shark. (laughs) A coconut! A a coconut! But there are some things you can do to avoid shark contact. Swim with a buddy close to shore. Don't swim near seals or schools of fish. Don't wear jewelry. And avoid excessive splashing. If a shark gets too close... You can hit it on the nose. You can hit it in the gills or poke it in the eye. And then get away. And then get away, right? You want to get out of the water as soon as you can. Dr. Lyons is researching the microplastics sharks are ingesting and how their populations are affected by climate change. If they're affected, then everything else below them is affected. Since you have been so excited about sharks since you were a little girl, what's it like to see them face to face like this? I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, it's, again, such a different experience being in with them rather than on the other side of an acrylic. That was Tom Costello reporting. As he just mentioned, shark attacks are rare, but we have recently seen a number of close encounters, many of them right here in Florida. Several months ago, a local 20-year-old man was bitten by a shark in the Florida Keys. He's now almost fully recovered. I spoke to him, and he says he's ready to get back into the water. Technically, he bit me in, like, the perfect spot because... I mean, I'm, I have full use in my leg. Three painful surgeries followed by physical therapy. I have uh, like minor tissue damage, minor, minor nerve damage and minor muscle damage. 20 year old Kevin Blanco is back home, walking, running, driving, even going on vacation. Do you ever think about the fact that this story could have had a much different ending? Oh yeah, oh, that's, that's, what, that's what I really do like think over again is that I could not be here. I could have one leg. I run through the whole thing and it's just like, wow. That's one way to put it. On May 18th, Kevin went spearfishing with friends down in Marathon. He was 70 feet underwater when a shark clamped down on his leg, just centimeters from a main artery. How much of this incident do you actually remember? All of it. His friends bringing him to the surface and wrapping a tourniquet around his leg until EMS crews could get him to the hospital. How lucky we are. His father, a captain with Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, getting the call no parent expects. We thank God every day for him still being here, you know. I know people who didn't make it, and I know how close we worked and being in a situation like those people. What's your attitude toward sharks? Sharks are, there's a lot of them. They're there, they're gonna be there. 
which is why Kevin says when, not if, he goes for another dive, he will do so with an understanding that this isn't human territory. It belongs to the sharks. 100% will be back out there. The only barrier between him and the water. I haven't spearfished yet. I will once I get approval from the household <laughs> so I don't get kicked out of my house. Yes. <laughs> okay. Kevin thanks his friends and firefighters who saved his life. He says he isn't going to try to treat the scars on his leg because, well, he wants it to be a reminder of how far he's come and his amazing story of survival. Another story of survival from a South Carolina surfer visiting New Smyrna Beach in September. Mark Somerset says when he finished riding a wave, he jumped off his board and was bitten in the face by a shark. He says it happened so fast he didn't even see the shark coming. The bite stretched from Somerset's forehead to his jaw and left him with 18 stitches. It was pressure. It wasn't a slash, it was pressure. And I'll tell you, that pressure, it was like a crunch. I heard the crunch. It just felt like I said, a bear trap just crunching on my face. The surfer also said he spotted around 10 sharks the day before he was bitten. He believes the fact that he was wearing a gold chain while surfing may have led to that bite. And there are more stories of recent shark attacks in Florida, from a preteen's beach vacation turning scary to a paddleboarder's close call on the water. 12-year-old Magnolia Woodhead was swimming at Cocoa Beach when a shark took a bite out of her right leg. I pushed it away because I knew that it hurt. It hurt so bad. She was rushed to the hospital, where she received 50 stitches. Luckily, she's expected to make a full recovery. And check out this terrifying scene caught on camera. Keep, keep coming. Keep coming. Malia Tribble was paddleboarding from the Bahamas to Florida, a shark trailing right behind her. Hard to tell. I felt something tap my board or touch my board. And so at that point, um, once Ricky turned around and I saw his face drop, her husband helping guide her to safety. Surreal is definitely the story. Despite these recent scares, experts say shark encounters are very rare. Even on a year like this year, where it seems like there's more, it's still actually incredibly low probability. In 2022, there were 16 unprovoked shark bites in Florida, the most in the nation. The Sunshine State has the most beaches in the continental U.S. And that means you put a lot of sharks and a lot of people in the water at the same time. And that's when accidents can happen. So the best advice from experts, stay alert when swimming in the ocean. Stay in groups and always make sure a lifeguard is nearby. Marine biologists say there may be more sharks closer to shore because that's where the fish are. They say it's a sign of a healthy ecosystem. But there is concern about the future. Researchers say in the next eight decades, warmer ocean temperatures could threaten the habitats of nearly a dozen fish predators. Here's NBC's Brooke Martell. According to a study led by Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, by the end of this century, the Atlantic Ocean and Gulf of Mexico could look and feel different. What we're seeing is this rise, a linear increase in ocean temperatures. Rebecca Lewison is a professor of biology at San Diego State University and co-author of the study. Using three decades of satellite and oceanographic modeling, researchers found because of climate-driven changes, these ocean temperatures could be one to six degrees Celsius warmer by 2100. These changes are having really big impacts on these top predator species. Focusing on species of shark, tuna, and billfish, scientists say rising ocean temperatures could affect where these migratory predator fish live in the ocean. And for many species, we're seeing really dramatic shifts, like on the order of hundreds of kilometers. If you come out of a particular port, if that species is no longer within hundreds of miles of where you normally fish, that has a huge impact economically. Lewison says fisheries have been noticing this change for decades. If these fish are moving to new areas, fisheries will have to adapt too. Our study is not just about the animals, it's also about fisheries because we're really focused on making sure that our fishing communities, fishermen, and fisheries are sustainable in the United States. These trends aren't favoring one coast over the other. In the Pacific, we're seeing similar um, patterns, but not the same because we tend to see more swings in ocean temperatures. So A reminder, shifts have already happened. So the work that we've been doing is to really 
has been for years to change the conversation. So we're talking about ocean management dynamically. A conversation on how to adapt to a changing climate. That we can't do business as usual, that we have to recognize it's here now. Uh, and these ocean temperatures and other conditions as well will continue to change in the near future. That was Brooke Martell reporting. And check out this amazing video. A large group of stingrays narrowly escaped a shark's clutches on Anna Maria Island, and it was all caught on camera by a drone operator. The shark eventually closed in on them and started chasing them, but the shark went away hungry after it was not able to catch any of those stingrays. All right, that's it for NBC6's Sharks Up Close special. Stay tuned to NBC6 on air, online, and of course, on our streaming platforms for more shark stories. And as always, thank you for watching.